also to make sure that we kind of remind everybody um, about the topics that are going to be in the next presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so why use RxJS? The reason why we use RxJS mainly is to avoid stateful programming within components and to be able to think in streams. <clears throat> so it allows for central placement of the state, for example, Redux. And it also, it also allows with stream-related programming you to use the operators that RxJS provides. So it has strong support from the JavaScript community. And it has 16.7 thousand stars on GitHub, which means a lot, right? And on top of that, it's constantly being updated. So if you go there and you look now, maybe a year ago, it was RxJS 5. And it was all JavaScript. But now it's TypeScript and is object-oriented. And it's also directly integrated with Angular. So many parts of Angular are observables and also return observables. And we'll get into that in a minute. So what is RxJS? Well, originally, RxJS was developed by Microsoft. And it was a JavaScript implementation of reactive extensions, which is a library that makes it easy to implement the reactive design pattern. And with the reactive design pattern, it's basically a way to be in the mindset of, OK, so whenever something happens, we're just going to react to that instead of statically programming. So for instance, in a successful HTTP request, when we get one, we react to that. If there's a button and a user clicks on that, we react to that. And that's the main way of thinking for the reactive design. Uh, it is based off of modified versions of the observer pattern and the iterator patterns. The observer pattern is basically you have an object. You have many other objects that observe that object. And whenever some that original object changes, all of the observers, as they're called, are notified automatically of the change. The iterator pattern most of you are probably actually familiar with if you come from C Sharp. Iterators are pretty popular with C Sharp. But they're relatively new with JavaScript. So the iterator pattern is the idea where you can connect some piece of code to what is called an iterator. And without necessarily knowing the implementation of what it is you're iterating through, you can call next and pull information from it. Now, RxJS uses something called observables. Now, observables push rather than pull. So what that means is with an iterator, you call next, and you pull information from the iterator. With an observable, the observable calls next and pushes information to what is listening to it. So that is the difference with the iterator pattern. It's a modified version of the iterator. RxJS makes it easy to write powerful callback-based uh, call asynchronous code. So with JavaScript, it's not actually an asynchronous programming language. We have to jump through a lot of hoops to make it asynchronous. And it kind of becomes a pain in the butt. <laughs> um, callbacks are the most popular way to do that. However, in the near future, we'll probably be seeing something called asynchronous iteration, which is using two technologies, iterators and generators, which generators are functions that return iterators. And using that to kind of write code that looks like it's synchronous, but in reality, it's actually asynchronous. You'll see that, I'm pretty sure, in the near future. And so now we're going to go through what my way of defining what an observable is, OK? <laughs> um, because you can go and you can find definitions of observables all over the internet. And they tend to conflict. And they also don't really make that much sense. So I'm going to try to go through it. But of course, you already know what that is. You've been using them for a while now. Um, observables are functions that accept an observer and return a subscription object with an unsubscribe function. So what is an observer? An observer is an object that consists of three functions, a next function, an error function, and a complete function. So it accepts an observer as the argument and returns a subscription object with an unsubscribe function. So in its most basic form, you pass an observer to it, the object that we just looked at. And then it's going to do some stuff, and then it's going to return an unsubscribe object, or I'm sorry, an object with an unsubscribe function that has cleanup logic inside of it. The second statement, observables are passed into an object that inherits from an observable class that accepts a subscription function as its constructor argument. That is a long sentence, so let's break it down. Up here, we have an observable class. It only consists of a constructor in this case. 
Inside the constructor, it accepts a subscribe, which is a function. And that's what we're actually going to call the observable, is that function that we're going to pass it. It creates a property for itself called subscribe and sets itself equal to what we pass it. So for example here, we'll create a const observable, and then we will set that equal to a new observable with a function, which is that subscribe function that we're going to pass into it. And that function itself takes the observable. And then again, we do some stuff and return an unsubscribe. What that does is it allows us to delay the firing of whatever happens inside of that function until when we call subscribe. Number three, observables connect your observer object to some sequence of data known as a producer and executes your observer's <laughs> okay. Execute your observer's corresponding functions based upon the producer's data stream. So let's look at it. So before we just had do some stuff, do some stuff, do some stuff. Well, now we actually have real stuff. So this section of the code represents the producer. Um, this is, of course, not a real, this is not really what it would look like. But just for demonstration purposes, this is what we've got. So in here, we have a URL. And we have an interval that's created. We set it equal to my interval so that we can reference it later in the unsubscribe to clear it for the cleanup. And what we're doing is every, looks like every five seconds, we're doing a fetch. And we're calling out to some URL and saying, hey, give us some data. We convert it to JSON. And then if it's successful, we call observer.next, which is what you get when you do dot subscribe and you expect some data. Observer.next passes that data to that. And then we increment one time. And the reason why I'm incrementing is to show here the auto complete. Okay. So effectively, what this is doing is taking some producer of data and connecting it to the observer object that you created. Observables can be thought of as being similar to promises with multicast and an extra dimension of time and the ability to cancel. So let's go through that. Multicast. So the relationship of observables to observers are one to many. The observable keeps track of a list of all of its observers and informs them equally of data changes. So what I mean by that is no matter where you subscribe to this observable, it's going to get the exact same piece of information that every other observer has received from the observable. Okay? You can then manipulate that with operators, which we'll go over in a minute. So it updates over time. Uh, unlike promises, which only send one value, and after that value gets sent, the promise is done. Observables update listeners over time. This gives us the ability to think in data streams, but it also requires us to cancel to avoid memory leaks. So if you have an interval and you don't cancel that, but you say in Angular, you have an interval and a component, you move away from that component, but you don't unsubscribe, the interval is still going to exist. It's still going to keep going in the background. And third, cancelability. Unsubscribing from observables allows us to cancel. With a promise, we are not able to cancel. And to demonstrate that, we have a promise on this side. We're going to call a function called promise test, which returns a promise that resolves after a successful HTTP request. No matter what you do, whatever is inside of the, this callback or this callback is definitely going to get called. You cannot cancel it. You can even set promise test to null. doesn't matter. It's going to get called. With observables, you can actually unsubscribe, and it will cancel even in-flight network requests. So if you make a network request that takes five seconds for some reason, and then one second later you decide you want to cancel it because the user tries to click back or click something else, you can cancel that, and you don't have to worry about the code executing. All right, next topic. Hot versus cold observables. Hot observables begin acting as soon as the observable is declared. You'll rarely ever see these. Most observables you see are cold observables, and those begin acting and pushing once the observable is subscribed to. So on the left, we have a cold observable. And each time you subscribe, what happens here is initially we set up this WebSocket. When you subscribe, it creates a connection to that WebSocket and begins listening. The problem with that is each time you subscribe to it, it's going to reconnect over and over. So if you have 100 observers, 
Each time you call subscribe, it's going to create a new WebSocket connection. You probably don't want that. <laughs> so in this case, a hot observable might make sense. There is a function offered by the API called publish, um, which basically converts a cold observable to a hot observable. And when you call observable.connect, that's effectively the same as calling subscribe to it on the first go around, except you still don't have any listeners. So that when you do start creating subscriptions, or observers as they're called, they don't re-execute what's inside of here. They just start listening. But the thing that you got to remember about this is that as soon as you call connect, it starts firing off whether or not you're listening. So if, you, if it fires off 100 times before you start subscribing, you're going to miss those 100 updates. All right, next thing, subjects. They're the same as observ observables, but allow you to push changes manually and also outside of itself is interesting. Um, so here we're going to set a const test subject equal to a new subject, and then a test subscription, which is the subscription of that, and then we're just going to log whatever it gives us. We can call next anywhere that we can reference this variable. And if we call test subject.next, it's going to log hello. Replay subjects, they are subjects that cache the previous one minus n emissions, n is defined by you. Subscribers will receive cached emissions upon subscription. So if you cache 100, uh, 100 emissions, when you subscribe to it, you're going to get all 100 of those updates at once. Behavior subjects are the same as replay subjects, except they only cache the previous emission, and they also allow for an in initial value. When you subscribe to it, it'll give you either the initial value or the previous value, depending on if there is an initial value. What parts of Angular are observables? The HTTP client methods return observables of HTTP responses. So when you do a get, you actually get a observable. Unlike with fetch, you actually get promises. This is good because it allows you to use the pipe operator and chain operators for that. Angular's router events are delivered via observables. So you can subscribe to Angular's router events Event emitter literally extends subject. So event emitter is a subject, but with extended functionality. Async pipe subscribes to an observable. So whenever you use an async pipe in a template, it subscribes to an observable, but also it can subscribe to promises, so keep that in mind. Reactive forms properties such as value changes and status changes are also observables. Let's look at some very simple ways to create observables. From event, create a button, create a reference to it. And then you can use the from event, which the first argument is the item that you're going to be listening for. And then the second argument is what type of event are you listening for. And whenever you get a click, it's just going to emit, in this case, it's going to emit and then log that event. Then we have of, which I chose this one on purpose. Um, const obs equals of an array of one, two, three, four. In this particular case, it's going to emit only once. It's going to emit the whole array. You can put as many arguments as you want inside of this of, and it will emit it in that order. It's different from from, because if I were to put this exact same thing with from, it would actually emit one, two, three, four, seven. You guys already know that. Um, so then interval is another common one. Um, in this case, we set an interval starting with 1,000 milliseconds, or one second. And then we subscribe to it. And then every one second is going to emit the iteration it is on, starting at zero. Popular operators, most common and most simple here. Use pipe to chain operators. Um, this is new with ES or RxJS 6. So we have a fake observable out there. It emits values from 0 to infinity every second, probably using the interval. Uh, test observable.pipe filter item goes to item is greater than 5. All of you know what that does, right? I'm sure. OK. So it starts, it's going to ignore the first 6 because it starts at 0. And then at 6, it's going to be begin uh, emitting. And then, or actually accepting is what I should say. Um, in this particular case, we have the same observable, but we're using map instead. And so it's going to emit 
every item times 2. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. And then, of course, you can also chain them. And here we're going to just combine these two. And so starting at 6, it's going to then start emitting each item multiplied by 2. And then everybody's favorite, uh, merge map and switch map. So these are the ones that everybody tends to get confused on when they're first learning RxJS because they don't really understand why they need to use them, typically. Um, and the documentation on them is very strange in the way it explains it. So the, here we'll use the most simple possible <laughs> explanation. So we have two observables, an inner and an outer observable. And respectively, we're going to call it observable 1 and observable 2. The first one's going to emit hello, and the second one's going to emit world. We're going to pipe them together, and we're going to use merge map. Okay, so what's going to happen here is we're going to take the outer observable, and we're going to merge map it, using it as a verb, to the second observable. We're going to pass whatever is emitted from the first observable into the second observable, essentially merging them into one observable. And then here, inside of this second observable, we're just going to concatenate it to hello world. But keeping in mind, if this was asynchronous, say this uh, first observable was asynchronous, that would fire off the second observable. So whatever's in the inner observable won't get triggered until the first emission of the outer observable. And then switch map, which is a little bit more powerful, um, but not that doesn't necessarily mean you should use it. Um, in this case, we should. So we have a button, and we're going to be listening for clicks on it. That's the outer observable. And then we have the inner observable, which is just an interval that happens every second. We take the outer observable, and we pipe and switch map it to the second observable. In this case, we're just going to completely ignore the event. We're not going to actually use the event inside of the inner observable. But what that's going to do is it's going to trigger when the user clicks the button, it's going to trigger the inner observable, which is the enter. We're going to start logging 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, if we use merge map here, it would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then you click the button, and then it would start a second interval. And so you'd have two intervals going at the same time, and then you could just keep clicking the button, creating new intervals over and over again. We don't want to do that here, so we use switch map. What happens is it gives this automatic cancellation effect, where it cancels the previous inner observable. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The user clicks the button again, cancels that interval, creates a new one, and then starts counting from there. And that is all for this one. Okay? Any questions?